Hello everybody, it's Sandy Alnock, and I have some shaker valentines for you today. And I'm calling these a technique refresh because I'm going back to this video from December and I'm going to create my gold spray using the water left over from watercoloring these tags. And so you can either click on the tags video here or I'll have it linked at the end if you want to go see what that was all about. But I put it in a glass jar and that way I could see what was happening with the gold that was sinking to the bottom. So you can see when I shake it up, it just sort of moves through the water. But this had started out half full and I just kept pouring off water and then letting it settle and pouring off water and letting it settle till I have just a small amount of water and a whole lot of gold. And then I'm gonna shake it all up really good, mix it up to get all that gold off the bottom and pour it into a Dixie cup because that will give me a little funnel spout that I can use to put all of this delicious gold into a Ranger Mini Mister and create my very own gold spray. And this is OWH safe and I love that because it means our heroes can have some shimmer on their card. So here's my finished Mini Mister and paints themselves. All the supplies by the way are going to be linked in the doobly-doo. Now I wanted to do something with a pattern, but what I found was when I tried this with a stencil, all these little pieces that weren't quite flat, and even if I taped it all down, I couldn't seem to get it to work really well and hold the pattern without the, the paint going underneath of all these little pieces, or at least some of them. But what I thought of trying, and it did work, was to use a die. I'm using a background die called Hugs and Kisses from My Favorite Things. And I punched out all of the little pieces that are in it. A little bit of tedium, but I'm gonna be using it, so not, not to worry. All that effort is not gone to waste. So the bottom piece is Distress Watercolor Cardstock. And this top piece is just some Nina. And I originally wasn't planning on using it, so that's why I went with lighter weight paper. However, I ended up deciding to use it and I'm putting a little bit, just a tiny bit of tape runner on the back of it so that it will stick just lightly to the front of the watercolor cardstock. And that way I can get it to, uh, to be a mask around the entire thing and spritz on my, my little spray. Now, be careful with this stuff. Don't get it in your lungs. It's got mica metal flakes in it, so you don't want any of this to get into your body. And so I just sprayed it really well, and now I'm going to have a piece for the front of one card that has the X's and the O's and the border around it, and the other one I'm going to make out of the mask piece, because look at the shimmer after it's dry. Look how beautiful that is. I just love this stuff. And look at it even on the masked piece. So as long as I can glue that down carefully, I can use that on a card as well. And so here it is adhered down. I've used my multi-matte multi medium from Ranger, putting little dots in the centers of each of this, these little holes and placing the insides of the O's in there. It is a little tedious, but it was worth it to put that extra little bit of time in there. Now I've die cut out of these dies from Simon Says, these stitch squares, two frames that I'm going to use for two little, little teeny tiny shakers. And then I cut two pieces of watercolor cardstock as well for the background pieces that are going to go behind them. So I'm going to take my Koi watercolors and just do a really quick wash on the watercolor cardstock for the background because I want them to be red. And so I always forget that this particular red that I grabbed right here is more pink and I wanted a little bit more red in it. So I'm just going to color each half of it with just a little bit more red. So I rinsed off my brush and I'll pick up a different red. So I'll just have a little bit more color. You're not going to see a whole lot of it by the time I'm all done, but it's going to give it a base of a color. So against all that gold, we're going to have this real quick pop of red. And now before I've, taken my, my little um, die cuts out of their piece of cardstock, I'm painting with these watercolors. They're kind of like um, twinkling watercolors, so you get the surface all wet and then you can pull paint up from it and the, 
the more you can wait and let them get creamy, the more color you get on your watercoloring. So watch the other video with the tags and that'll tell you a whole lot more about these paints and how they work and stuff. And they're very, very cool. So I've got those all painted up and ready to roll. They're dry now. And I've got a piece of plastic. I save little pieces of plastic when I get good flat ones that aren't all scratched up from packaging of materials that I've purchased. And so I'm just kind of cut little squares, just about the right size for my little frames so that I can make the shakers out of them. And I'll use some tape runner. This is a stamp runner from Tombow. I'm gonna to put it all along the outside of my frame so that I can put my little piece of plastic on it and that's gonna keep all my shaker pieces inside. Next, I need something to hold hold this up off the surface of the card and it's going to hold all my little shaker pieces in. You've probably seen this before but if you've not seen a shaker this is kind of how it's constructed. I'm taking little pieces and gluing them right along the inside edge. Now you can have a larger frame that sort of thing but you want to make sure that your whatever's holding in your little shaker pieces is really close to the edge of whatever that inside shape is because otherwise your shaker pieces will get lost behind the frame and you want them to be seen not to be hiding back there. So you also want every little bit of this to be completely sealed in. So I'm trimming it really carefully to make sure that I have a perfect square around it so that all of my little pieces stay where they're at. So on this one I decided, the other one I filled too much, so this one I decided I was only going to put one X and one O or two X's and two O's, two pairs into here. And then I got some sprinkles. And these are not the little crystal type of sprinkles. They're more of the bead type of sprinkles. They're like non-pareils in a little red color. And I've just put a couple of those in there. And I'm trying to shove them in <laughs> with my craft knife there to try to make sure they all stay inside where they belong and not on my adhesive. And then I'll place my colored cardstock that I painted on the back of it. Super easy to assemble these. And then they're ready to put on my cards. And you can see they're, they shake. They make a little noise. Trust me, you can't hear that, but they make a little noise. And I'll put some ATG tape on the back and adhere them. I'm putting both of them in the lower right-hand corner because I wanted to add a sentiment to it but I wanted to put it kind of offset so that the, uh, the whole sentiment and everything is off in the corner because I want all that gold to really be the star of the card. What I did though was pulled out my Love You dies from Simon Says and I pulled them off of the, uh, the cardstock that I cut them out of before painting them. I should have painted them while they were still in, embedded in the cardstock, but you know, live and learn, right? So I'm fighting a little bit with trying to paint them. And then I put some adhesive on the back, the multi-matte medium from Ranger, and added a little bit of a heart. And I watercolored the heart as well. So I think these cards came out really cute. They're really simple, but super shiny. And they have the added fun of being little noisy shakers. And you can see the shimmer and shine on both of them here in these photos. I can see lots and lots of uses for this amazing gold paint. And even though it's expensive paint, the whole set is not inexpensive by any means, it's going to last a long time because I hardly used any of it for the watercoloring of like these frames. And I used all the leftovers as spray. So you can get a lot of mileage out of it if you buy these paints. So all the supplies are in the description and they're also on my blog. So click in the upper right hand corner if you want to go see the blog. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye now.